and in the haram, I, I, I decided that I can contribute something and I also make a video at the Kaaba because if you make a video in front of the Kaaba, it should increase your credibility that in, in this place you will uh, speak. You fear Allah, you don't uh, Indeed. Uh, in line this place. Yeah. Indeed. Of his, um, when I go out of his um, office, there was a civil police waiting for me oh. at the door. Strange. That's strange. Yeah, that's strange. And he took me with him yeah. into the civil police car and they bring me to the to the police uh, station. You know. Very unbearable. Very mm -hmm. really strange. Yes, they put me in jail. And I was in jail with one. He was accused of murder. You know. <laughs> I was, SubhanAllah. Can you please share with our viewers that did you even speak to your teachers, the scholars of Medina University about Imam al Mahdi regarding the Ahadith al Mubarakah, which tell about that Mahdi will em be emerged from the East? So, did you talk to them about it? I no? did, Alhamdulillah. Allah gave me some time until I got arrested two okay. weeks and I had a chance to speak. I spoke to the Grand Mufti of Medina. Grand Mufti, Mufti of Medina, Munawar. the Grand Mufti of the city of the Prophet. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Sheikh Saliyah Shuhaymi, what's okay. his name? And did you even try to share the message with Imam Kaaba, Sheikh Sudai, Sheikh Shuraim? Did you try your best to? I try to reach as many people I can. How? I asked for the contact of the. Okay, that's great. Can you please share with us? Yeah, so I asked one uh, university of uh, Mecca, Mecca University student for the contact. He was your friend or someone? Yes, he's my friend from, for the contact of the, of the Shuyuk, of the Imams from the Kaaba, from Mecca. So then I was surprised what he says because he said these people from the Imam from Kaaba and the Sheikh of Mecca, they already all know Karsi. That's what he said to me. So strange. Yes. نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My name is Fahad Khan and today we have a very special guest with us Yahya from Switzerland Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum assalam Yahya has arrived in Pakistan mashallah I want to ask first of all about your experiences how you came to Brother Qasim's dreams please share with our viewers Okay so I come to costume streams by chance, but there is no coincidence, you know. Alhamdulillah. In Islam, but I, I, I came to his dreams uh, by a video on YouTube. Okay, whose video you watched first? From Brother Nasser. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Uh, we just saw a video, you gave a witness at Baitullah, mashallah, at Haram. So, what kind of issues you faced in Makkah Mukarrama or in Medina University? Yes, um, so when I was uh, convinced, I saw with many videos also from the brother Salah. Oh yes, in the in the, in the Haram. I, I I decided that I can contribute something, and I also make a video at the Kaaba because if you make a video in front of the Kaaba, it should increase your credibility. That in, in this place you will uh, speak. You fear Allah, you don't uh, indeed in line this place. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. So that's why in this place I, I make the video and. Subhanallah, the video went viral Subhanallah. by the will of Allah and Indeed. after some weeks the, the director of the university he, um, he, he got to know the video even, Subhanallah and he invited me to his uh, office his office okay yeah and so then uh, he asked me if this is me who did the video and everything and then I was surprised because he asked me to make tawbah from my belief oh. from what I say and I said this is not possible because I still believe this you know so then he, he, he was arguing with me a long time and we had a long discussion. And when I go out of his um, when I go out of his um, office, there was a civil police waiting for me oh. at the door. Strange. That's strange. Yeah, that's strange. And he took me with him into the civil police car and they bring me to the to the police um, station, you know. Okay. Yeah. So they bring me to the police station and so they take away my phone and just for verification or investigation, right? Yeah, for investigation. Then? So I ask them what uh, what is happening with me and they say you have done something which is uh, haram, which is forbidden. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised and I have asked them what did I do? So they said you speak against Sharia law, you know. Mm -hmm. say, I say I speak against Sharia. So I just said SubhanAllah, you know, I just, uh, I was patient and then SubhanAllah they put me in jail. Oh my God, that is truly unbearable, truly strange. Yes, they put me in jail. And I was in jail with one. He was accused of murder. You know, <laughs> I was, Subhanallah. So then I was in jail, and in the night at 3 a.m. they wake me up and they put me on foot shackles. 
Oh my god. Yeah. Like you did a very like, big like crime. I, I felt like I did something very big, big crime. Big oh crime. Yes, and then they bring me in mental hospital, you know. Oh they bring me in mental hospital to the psychiatrist and but I was lucky because the doctor said yeah, I am alhamdulillah. fine. Alhamdulillah. It brings me back again. <coughs> this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, Allah made it easy, alhamdulillah. You know? Okay, I want to ask you, please share with our viewers, that did you even speak to your teachers, the scholars of Medina University about Imam al Mahdi regarding the Ahadith al Mubarakah, which tell about that Mahdi emerged from the East? So, did you talk to them about it? I no? did, alhamdulillah. Allah gave me some time until I got arrested two okay. weeks. And I had the chance to speak. I spoke to the Grand Mufti of Medina. Grand Mufti of Medina, Mufti of Medina Mufti. the Grand Mufti of the city of the Prophet. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Sheikh Saliya Shuhaymi okay. is his name. And yes, he um, we spoke together about the hadith of the Mahdi. Okay. So his answer was there is only four Sahih hadith about the Mahdi. And that's his argument that um, this discussion we could not continue. Did not you tell him that? Just before, uh, because of these four hadith of you can't you can't come on a conclusion about Imam Al Mahdi. You can't complete the whole chapter with this only four hadith of Mubarakah. Exactly. Did that you tell him? Yes, exactly, exactly. What 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 he said then? So well, he he said we should meet again because he's not specialized in hadith. Oh my God. This is actually uh, I think many scholars they just read one book and they just follow that book they do not come to the hadith of Now this could be the reason this might be the reason they are not coming on a particular conclusion do you agree with that yes Allah knows best yes. Allah know. okay uh, so what your friend said in Medina University what did they say about you when you just made a witness video yes I was um, I was giving dawah to many um, and the reactions was very different there was one uh, brother who believed mashallah and others they uh, had a strange reaction and they don't respond to my salam to me back anymore you know okay i'm sorry so, about that yes so. well there is one more question did you know from before that mahdi will emerge from the east Al alhamdulillah alhamdulillah i did this uh, know myself before really. how, how? because i read the, the hadiths which are very clear about this although they're weak and i read in the book of uh, ibn Kathir that okay yeah, take this. Mahdi will emerge from the east. Yes, right? no doubt. Yes. Okay, that's really great, mashallah. And I've heard about you that you are a reward Muslim. Yes, I am a reward brother. Yes. When did you accept Islam? I accept Islam just before Corona crisis. Subhanallah. This was uh, welcome to Islam, by the yes, way. Yes, thank you. Mashallah, mashallah. So, what how, what did you find out from Brother Kasim dreams? How uh, could you come to a particular conclusion that he is the real way to the Imam Mahdi? And um, this is. What message did you get from that particular dreams about Muhammad Qasim? It is because, Alhamdulillah, I already had knowledge about the end of time hadith and it was, I was really like obsessed with them and I was really interested in them and when I saw the dreams, they was just more, they gave me more knowledge about this, more details and this was, this is a blessing, you know, to, to, to have, these, have these dreams and so they, they increased me. So, and what was your reaction when you saw first Brother Qasim's face and he had no beard and we, we have, uh, we have a, an image in our minds that Mahdi would come riding a horse, holding a sword and with long beard, with long hair. So what was your reaction? Exactly, about? exactly. You know, we live in the time of fitna and um, I believe in the time we live right now to have narratives in our mind is really not helpful. Yes. Because finally Allah knows what is in the heart and this is what, what counts. Indeed. And, uh, yeah, the hypocrites are the first to go into the Jahannam. So, um, Alhamdulillah, Allah preserved me to be like, um, you know, I, I, I just uh, saw my brother Qasim uh, face and um, I believe we have something like intuition inside us, you know? Subhanallah. It's like intuition. I cannot explain this to you, but I have like recognized him like I know him. It's Many helpers, yes. they told me earlier as well that as we saw Brother Kasu for the first time and we just realized by looking at his face that we have seen this person. Subhanallah, you know, it happens this is with some people. Allah Yes, this is, this is what happened to me, you know. Okay, that's great, mashallah. Okay, I'll ask last two questions from you. Um, how do you find out, how did you find out the people of the Medina or the scholars of Medina reacted on Brother Kasim's dreams? What would they say about that? Is it against Sharia? Is it against Islam, something like? So we have to see that uh, right now the current situation in Saudi, Saudi Arabia is the, for the fact that um, 
we know if the Mahdi comes in this time, mm. it's the king is finished. Yes, obviously. Uh, obviously. obviously. The whole Ummah will there be only, Mahdi. There will only be one Imam. Only one that's Khalifa. It. That's it. In the so whole world. that's why if in Saudi Arabia you claim someone to be the Mahdi, they are not happy because uh, the, it's a very strong regime there from the king. And uh, so it means they have to go. So they don't want someone to say this, you know. Oh, yes. Very strong point. Yes. Did, did you see any dream about Brother Muhammad Qasim after knowing him or before knowing him? So, yeah, I did. You know, it's possible we have dreams which we forget and they, are, they set too deep in our unconscious. Yes. I believe this, but I didn't have a dream I remembered. But for the fact that I could uh, know Qasim when I saw him the first time, I don't know from where is this. Maybe this comes from dreams, whatever. But no, I did not see like particular dreams that made me believe. I believed by um, by the permission of Allah like this, but after this I saw a dream, Alhamdulillah. What you saw a dream? What you dreamt about Muhammad Qasim? I, I dreamt that uh, I'm, I'm in the castle oh, my God. of Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia and I give nasiha to him. Muhammad bin Salman? Yes, okay. I give nasiha to him about, about um, the dreams of Prophet Qasim. Subhanallah. I speak to him about this and I, I say him you must do good, you know, do good, make khair. And uh, yeah, that was my first dream. Okay. And my second dream then is that I was again in the palace. And this time the palace was full of gold, and very high in the sky, like, and it was the palace of the king of Saudi. Okay. Again, Muhammad and Yes, Salman. again. Okay. And I, I, I received the kingdom from him. Subhanallah. Like, I, he gave it to me, and there was a lot of abundance of wealth. Oh, wealth right. So much money, you know. And then there was also one other helper was with me there. Mm -hmm. And then I give this kingdom in my dream to Brother Qasim. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is what I did. Right? Very beautiful I dream. I don't know what it means. No, no, inshallah. Allah will make it true, inshallah, Allah is with his mercy. Okay, so uh, I'll, this last question, uh, and then after that, I would like you to uh, say something about our viewers. What should they do and what should they do? Not? Okay. <clears throat> uh, what, how did the scholars of Medina University react on the Hadith Mubarakah, which tell about Mahdi emerging from the East? How did they react? Yeah, you see, um, and even about the students, please tell me, because they all are becoming scholars there, right? Right. So, what did they react of this Hadith Mubarakah? So, well, the main issue they have is that these Hadiths are classed as Da'if by, okay. by, by the scholars. Yes. So, they have the difficulties to, to be convinced of these Hadiths, you okay. see. Because I think they think that Mahdi will, will emerge from Saudi Arabia. So, yes, there are different people. There are people who are specialized in Hadith and others who are less specialized in mm -hmm. Hadith. And yes, that's those who study the Hadith, they, they, they know that um, this is also in the book of Ibn Kasir. And, yes, know, of course, of course. They know this, you know. So, yeah, they they can agree to this, you know. They, they can come to this point, right? They yes, can. of course. Okay. What would you like to say to our viewers and uh, people who cannot believe to Brother Qasim's dreams? Do you find anything uh, in his dream which is against Sharia? No, oh, no, of course. What is the basic, basic message in, uh, in the dreams of Brother Muhammad Qasim? The basic message is um, avoiding forms of shirk, obviously. This is, this is probably the, the most important message, right? That's true, that's true. Yeah. So what message do you want to give to our viewers? Or to the people of Saudi Arabia? Um, what message I'm giving? This is... Um, I think we should, they are also our Muslim brothers, and we should uh, request them not to fight among each other, but just uh, we should read the Hadith and Warqa, and we should come behind that one particular Imam al Badi who has emerged from Pakistan. So this is the success about all Muslim Ummah, that's it. So, not other than that. Inshallah, brother, yes, inshallah. That's great, mashallah. But, uh, I give one um, um, nasiha I have. Yes, yes, please. Because what I observe in our time today is that people, they, they are not thinking for themselves and they expect that other people think for them. They want that the scholars do the work which they have to do themselves. Very good point. And if you want this, then you are a very risk path because if the scholar go astray, you will also go in the same wrong direction. And hit, hit, you your, you hit your head on a wall. Yes, you this is... Um, so that's why I, I, I really say, um, I want to remind that actually I came across a very interesting um, thing that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says more the phrase for people who think than for people who believe. Okay. You know, so for people who think comes more in the Quran than for people who believe. So this means the Quran and all Islam is for people who think. 
or use their minds. Can you please tell me the meaning of that uh, verse number six, Surah Hujra? What does that mean? So, إذا جاءكم فاسقكم فتبينوا it means if some uh, disobedient person it says in the Quran comes to you with a news, then investigate. And this is the order of the King of the Kings of the of, of the Most High to everybody. And I am surprised that even the the scholars who is the, can be the greatest scholars, they, this is something very simple. Yes did, or no? Did you tell this verse to the Mufti of uh, uh, Medina University? I, I said this verse to the Mufti of Medina University, you know. What did you reply then? And then after this, he... <laughs> should I, should I he passed what? negative comments, something like? He, yeah, brother, he, he, he passed negative comments about... Yes. Brother Qasim? Yes. And on what basis he passed my negative comments? Did he study his dreams or Brother Qasim's dreams or did he study something about him? If you ask me, he passed his comments on basic of his emotion. Oh my yeah. God. He did not even bother to read the dream of Brother Muhammad Qasim, right? Yes, of course not. And did you even try to share the message with Imam Akawa, Sheikh Sudais, Sheikh Shuraim? Did you try your best to uh, give them the message there? When I was in Medina, brother, I was not in Mecca, but I, I, I tried to reach as many people I can. How? I asked for the contact of the... Okay, that's great. Can you please share with us? Yeah, so I asked one uh, university of uh, Mecca, Mecca University student for the contact. He was your friend or someone? Yes, he's my friend for, for the contact of the, of the shuyuk, of the imams from the Kaaba, from Mecca. Okay. And he did not want to give it to me because he knows what I, I, uh, what I believe. Mm. But... He knew about your belief? Huh? Yes, he knows. Oh, okay. He knows yes. <laughs> okay, then? So then I was surprised what he says because he said these people for the Imam from Kaaba and the Sheikh of Mecca they already all know Qasim. Allah That's what he said to me. Allah so strange. strange. Yes. Oh my God, I'm totally shocked on this point. Honestly speaking, yes. if they already know about Brother Muhammad Qasim and his dream, but still they are not believing. This is truly not not good. Honestly speaking, not. But it's good they know already. You know. It's a, Subhanallah. Well, uh, thank you so much, Yahya, for being with us, and uh, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give all of us istikama. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, bring all Muslim Ummah on under uh, one flag uh, behind Muhammad Qasim Al Imam Al Mahdi. So, thank you so much for being here. We will be having your another interview soon, Inshallah. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.